just a minute, that's just way too high. So church. I uh, hope uh, you can experience something that will bring joy to your heart, uh, gladness to your day, and take you through the rest of the week. Um, we do have an announcement. Uh, Robin has got the uh, trunk or treat sign-up sheets right out in the middle of the wel uh, welcome center. You can't miss it. So when you walk out this morning, if you're going to come out to trunk or treat and you can help us out in any way, please stop by that little table and fill that out. It's this Saturday, 6 o'clock. Uh, decorate your trunks. Come prepared, and uh, we have a good time. Every year, we, we have 80 to 90 kids that come out uh, to, to take part in that. So we could certainly use all the help that we can get. Um, also, uh, let's, we've got some prayer requests here, so bear with us for a second. Uh, Wayne Edwards, that's, uh, uh, he's the brother of Phyllis Norris. He's going to have eye surgery again on the other eye. He had surgery a while back. Um, and this one, he, if the chances are if, if the surgery doesn't take, he could go blind. So uh, let's remember him in prayer. Um, and also, uh, let's remember uh, Josie and Shirley. Uh, son, Alan, uh, he's been diagnosed with kidney cancer. And then Sue McGill is uh, going to be going into surgery uh, next week on the 19th. So let's remember her in prayer. And then also... There's a request for Jay's friend. Uh, they're um, going through a divorce, and the children are kind of caught in the middle of that. So let's remember that family in prayer. Um, let's remember each other. Let's remember our country. Uh, let's remember those that are fighting for our freedoms um, and for their protection. Uh, I have a very special place in my heart uh, for our military. Um, so let's uh, remember them as they serve. 
Uh, so let's uh, take a minute, and uh, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God in heaven, we just want to come before you this morning, thanking you for this time that we have. Father, so unworthy as we are, Lord, sometimes to just gather and, and lift up your name and praise you, Lord. We're just so thankful for that spirit, Lord, that you've put in within us that, Father, just gives us such a peace and a, and a longing for that, that beautiful country, Lord God, that we're all looking toward. Father, we've got some requests that were made this morning, Father, for sicknesses, for those that are going through surgeries, that are you know, suffering sin-cursed affliction in their lives, and we just want to lift them up before you this morning, Lord God, and we just trust and pray that each and every need is going to be met. Father, each and every request is going to be answered. Father, we just pray for those that are gathered here this morning. Father, the hearts that are lost especially. Father, we pray that as Brother Tony comes and delivers the message, Father, that just give him a sweet peace in preaching your word. And Father, just help it to be seasoned by that spirit, Lord God, that it could find that good ground. Father, a lodging place, Lord, that it could have touch lives and change hearts. And Father, that someone this morning could come to know you. Father, we pray for all of the, our pastors he travels and we pray for your uh, for safety to be upon him. And we're just so thankful, Lord God, for this time that we have. And we're going to dedicate it to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
got it on? Okay. It's good to be back after being gone. But when I've been gone and I come back, I'm so terribly disorientated. The first song that we sang, I played it in the key, started out playing it in the key that it was written in. Now, I don't know why our hymns in this book are written so high. Nobody sings that high. And, I, I, and when they were written, I don't know how the people sang it then because then everybody smoked, and you know smokers don't sing high. And I don't know how they did those songs that high. Uh, and then the choir song, we went through it, and they said, don't we repeat the chorus? And I thought, I have no idea if we repeat the chorus or not. Uh, but if the piano starts slowing down, because rec I recorded into the piano, if the piano starts slowing down, then you guys just slow down. We're not repeating the chorus. And the choir did perfect on that. But just before the choir song, I remembered that there had been a couple of people say, please play in the garden again. They, they said it a couple of times to me, and I keep thinking, they must think that's the only song that we know. And... Um, I'm putting it off, and I just turned to uh, Marty and said, let's do In the Garden. And Marty looked at me like, why are you springing something like that on me right now? But it, to be quite truthful, we never practiced it anyways uh, when we did it the first time or the second time. So you just bear with us. Beautiful song, though. <laughs> Ask me what key. I've been known to play in the skeleton key.
Good morning. <laughs> At Skeleton Key. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Good. Good. Uh, I don't know keys, chords, or whatever. I had uncles that played just about anything they could play. And they would try to teach me when I was a little boy. And I was so hyper I couldn't stay still. And he would tell me, he says, now, you have to think at least two chords ahead. I said, why think two chords ahead if you don't get the first one right, you know? I mean, that's just a waste of thinking power. But it's good to be in the Lord's house, good to be here with you, and thank you for coming and being with us in this hour of service. Uh, as you can tell by an empty chair that Larry's not here. Uh, he, I think he's down in North Carolina, I think. And so uh, I think he was there about a week before he saw the sun. And I thought maybe that's good. But it's good to be in the Lord's house. We're thankful for that you've come to be with us. And uh, as we look into the precious Word of God, if you have your Bibles and would like to turn with us to Isaiah chapter 32, verse 1 through 4. If we'll stand for the reading of God's Word. Behold, a king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall, reign, shall rule in judgment. And a man shall be as a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary, weary land. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim, and the ears of them that hear shall hearken. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this privilege that you've given us to be gathered together once again. We're thankful for your precious word, Father, and we pray, pray that you'd bless the reading thereof to where that it would go out and not return into the void. Father, help us this morning to where that we might stand and proclaim the gospel and the power of the Holy Spirit to where that we would never say anything within ourselves, but it would come from your uh, word and through the Holy Spirit. Father, we pray that if there's one in our midst that don't know you, this would be the time, this would be the day that, they would sp that you would speak to their heart and that they would come forth and be saved by your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. You may be seated. Isaiah, one of the major prophets, and some people call him the greatest prophet in the Old Testament, he prophesied a lot of things concerning the coming of a Messiah, the coming of Christ, that he prophesied uh, these things 700 to 750 years before they transpired. That's the reason why that you can trust the Bible, because it was uh, uh, they prophesied what was going to transpire long times before it came to pass. And, and that's one of the uh, rules that you have of uh, false prophets versus true prophet is that which they prophesy comes to pass. And Isaiah prophesied a lot of things concerning Christ. Isaiah pro prophesied of the virgin birth in chapter 7 and 14. He prophesied his many names in Isaiah 9 and 6. And he had written of his coming kingdom and 9, 7 of Isaiah. But this verse is dealing with who Jesus is. Uh, what did this man Jesus, uh, what some characteristics that he has of Jesus. Like a hiding place from the wind speaks of salvation. We can see that the subject of wind of life, we have to go through the storms in this walk of life, and the winds blow, and uh, uh, howls. I've never been in a hurricane, but I can remember back in 68, when, right after Brenda and I had gotten married that spring, there came a tornado through Flat Rock. And I was amazed because that I had experienced it firsthand of the devastation of the wind and how that it destroyed uh, things. And we were in a subdivision there in Flat Rock on Tamarack Drive, and we were in a home uh, that uh, some friends of ours, because they had a basement. And I can remember going out after the storm, both sides of us, and those are 50-foot lots in there. 
I can remember going outside, and the roof on the one side of us was gone, and the roof was gone on the other side of us, and there wasn't a shingle missing off the house that we were in. And I, I thought, how, how can that be when a tornado comes through that how could that possibly happen that you can sit in the middle of it and it's still not bother one on one side, one on the other, but not the one in the middle. And so that we can see regardless of the winds uh, uh, that life, we have the winds blowing in our life from time to time that we can see the winds of circumstances. Today, people do not want to know right from wrong. They want to have it. They are unconcerned about black and white. Everything depends upon circumstances rather than upon the Word of God. Oftentimes, as we as children of God, uh, we let circumstances dictate to us more than what the Word of God does. And when the winds blow, that's the time that we need some shelter. That's the time that we need some place that we can go to get out of the wind to where that we can find some comfort. I often think about the Edmund Fitzgerald, and it's soon uh, coming to the anniversary of that. They said if they could have made it to the bay, Whitefish Bay, that they probably have been safe. So any time that the winds blow and the storms come that we need a place that we can get into to get out of the wind to where that we can be safe. And circumstances often dictate to us how that we react to storms rather than depending upon the Word of God and upon the Holy Spirit as it would dictate our heart. And so that we see that circumstances uh, play a part in our lives. But the Word of God should play a bigger important uh, part of our life. And then we see the winds of temptation that allure us. Today I'm 65, soon be 66 years old, and what I was tempted with 40 years ago is different than what I was tempted today, but I'm still being tempted each and every day because each one of us that's trying to live a Christian life, uh, the devil is always trying to find our weak spots to where that he can lure us away into temptations, and we can read in the Word of God where Jesus was tempted, but yet he did not yield to that temptation just as you and I, when we get up of the morning, we have to decide, are we going to live for the Lord or are we going to just go haphazardly through the day? If we begin our day with prayer, most of the time that we uh, are led by the Holy Spirit, we've got our mind centered upon the Lord and therefore He strengthens us and helps us in that daily activity. But if we begin our day haphazardly, we probably spend that day haphazardly because we haven't started out the day uh, with the Word of God or with a prayer and then because uh, we're tempted to, uh, to go, be led astray. But the more that I'm into the Word of God and the more that I pray, the less temptation I can uh, is there and the stronger I am to resist the temptation that comes. And so that we can see the temptation, the winds of trouble, they try us. We look at the news and we see that there's trouble on every hand. There's unrest in the Middle East. There's unrest here. There's unrest there. But if you're seeking peace, you'll not find find it except for in Christ Jesus. This world has been in a turmoil ever since the garden, ever since Adam and Eve uh, broke God's law. This world has been in a turmoil. Uh, we have always been struggling. Uh, it, God says to, uh, to believe on me and live, and the devil says live like I want to and die. And so that we can see that there's a, a, a struggle goes on there. Uh, there's trouble on every hand that we turn around. We look at our government and we can see that it's in utter chaos because uh, of people not de designed to work together for the benefit of the people. It worked good for 200 years, but it seems like the, lately that it's been in turmoil. We're in trouble, but if we're going to find the answer to the trouble, it cannot be found in Congress, and it cannot be found in a president. It can only be found in Christ Jesus. If we turn back into Him and put Him first and uttermost in our life, I believe He'll continue to bless our nation as He once did. I bet there's too many people today I don't believe the word of God and they want to not have right and wrong they're just floating with the tide if this floats okay I'll go that direction if it goes upstream I'll go that direction uh, but we're not rooted and grounded in the word of God we need a quiet harbor during high winds I'm thankful today that uh, when trouble comes and temptation comes and circumstances surround me uh, that I've got some place that I can go and he's never uh, busy and he's always there when I call 
call upon his name with faith believing he's always come through and no matter how high the winds are the storm is cal- I calm can you remember when Peter I stepped out of the boat and he began to walk on the water and we could see that he as long as he kept his eyes upon Christ he done a pretty good job but when he looked around him and saw the waves uh, boisterous and the wind was heavy and he took his eyes off Christ he began to sink but Peter still was very smart he didn't ask Andrew to throw me to a light line John helped me back into the boat he looked at Christ and said Jesus save me he knew that if he was in trouble that there was only one place to go and that was Jesus Christ and that's the same as it is today faith in Jesus calms the storm I'm thankful that I'm living by faith oftentimes that if I was living by sight every time I look around me it's worse and worse but I'm thankful that when I I go to the Lord in prayer that he can I do calm though in my heart he can steal my nerves and he can give me strength to overcome the difficulties in this walk of life and I'm thankful that I'm a child of God faith in him cons the storm and the winds and he receives and forgives us I'm thankful that repentance is a continuous thing I didn't just repent when I got saved and said Christ I'm a sinner and I need you in my life I have to repent daily today that a lot of people don't want to hear that they want to tell everybody to tell them how good they are and how sweet they are but brother according the more I look at God the holier he gets and the more wretched I get the more that I look at Christ I see him and the suffering that he done and I have nothing to complain about because I've got a home that I can go to I got a bed that I can lay down in I got a refrigerator that I can open and get anything almost I want to eat and brother that only comes by the blessings of God because I'm thankful and believe it or not, I'm thankful that I got an appetite because it'd be terrible to see all this food and not be able to eat it. But I'm telling you uh, that God has blessed us. He is like a, a cover in a tempest. I uh, speaks of the security. I'm thankful that I'm in t- eternally secured. I don't have to worry about uh, keeping myself. If I wasn't big enough to save myself, I'm not big enough to keep myself. I'm thankful that I'm kept by the power of God. I'm thankful that I'm led by the Holy Spirit. I'm thankful that I can eat from the Lord's table uh, that holy bread that that, man, that not manna that came down from heaven, but Jesus Christ that came down and became the living bread. And the cover is a place of refuge. I'm thankful today that oftentimes that we talk about shelters and refuge in this walk of life, where the, uh, the storms come. And if you don't have some place to go, it's scary to be out there. And so that we can see the shelter from the storm. I'm thankful that he has a home uh, for the homeless. I rather I wasn't homeless when I got saved. My mother and dad had a home that I knew that I could go to. And regardless of where I'd be in, and I knew that when I come home, there'd be a nice warm bed to be uh, to crawl into. And I knew that I had a mom and dad that loved me. And brother, I wasn't homeless physically, but I was homeless spiritually. I didn't have no home, my friend. And that place that I, that, that I was looking at was a place called hell. And brother, it's a place that oftentimes that we don't want to talk about. But today, I believe it's a reality just as sure as there's a heaven to gain uh, there's a hell to shun and the only way that you can shun hell is through the blood of Jesus Christ having it applied to your life I'm thankful that I'm no longer homeless I feel sorry for those people uh, when they show them on TV oftentimes in the winter time uh, that they don't have any place to go and then they crawl up in a cardboard box I'm thankful that God has blessed me with a little home here but I'm more thankful that I've got a home over in glory. And brother, it ain't no cardboard box. I don't know what it is, but I guarantee you, it'll meet every need that I have in this walk of life and in the next one to come. So that we can see the strongholds in time of a battle. Oftentimes, that uh, when a person is begin to to, uh, to do battle with the enemy, he wants the higher ground to where he can get a good stronghold. But brother, I read in the Word of God when J- uh, uh, Joshua, God told him to walk around the city uh, seven times, uh, once every uh, once a day for six days, and on the seventh day, I uh, walk her the seventh time. You talking about a battle strategy? It wasn't one if you looked at the military aspect of it. But brother, I'm telling you. 
knew that he had a stronghold and that being the Lord God Almighty he was going to do the fighting he was going to be the one that was going to bring the victory and if victory came there was no doubt who brought it brother today if there's victory in my life there's no doubt who borrowed it it's Jesus Christ because I'm not strong enough I to fight the authority darts of the devil but I can in Christ Jesus and when I hide behind him he is willing to take the darts he's willing to protect me and I keep me safe and help me along the way the stronghold it's a sanctuary for those in need of peace today that people are seeking peace we want to have it in the world we want to have it with the nation and it seems like there's more turmoil today than ever before and I'm telling you that the only place that you can find peace is in the Lord Jesus Christ am I satisfied with the condition that this world is in no siree but I'm satisfied with what happened I've got a peace that surpasses understanding because it as a nine year old boy I tasked him to come into my my heart and my life and he took up his abode there and he's been every, there ever since and brother I'm thankful for that I've not always been what I should be but praise be God he's always been what he ought to be to me and so that we could see and then there's many storms social storms I feel sorry for our young people today I feel sorry for what they're having to face. I talk to my grandchildren and I see the things that they have to I put up with each and every day and it's terrible, the pressure that they have. I'd rather it's time that we as parents and grandparents begin to tell them the only high, uh, place that they can find strength is in the Lord Jesus Christ and that they need to be in the house of God each and every time that they have the opportunity. I, mean, I believe they'd be a lot more here on Sunday if they'd make up their mind on Monday that they were going to be here rather than waiting to Saturday night and saying well if there's nothing else better I'll go to church Sunday morning I believe that we have to have some determination in our life if we're going to be a child of God if we're going to be a, ch a church member I believe that we should be here every time that we have the opportunity and I tell you what uh, sometimes that we can't and I realize that sometimes sickness and sometimes family uh, uh, hinder us from coming and that's all right and I believe God understands that but brother when you don't come and you have the opportunity uh, that's where the trouble starts. That's where you begin to fail uh, the Lord. And so that we can see uh, economical, I, I, today that there's not the economical success that we had as a child growing up when I came up here, uh, that you could get a job just about any place. If you could had all four arms and could breathe, you could work someplace. Uh, but today those jobs are no longer there and our children are suffering because of that, because that, uh, uh, that they can't find uh, jobs that pay enough. It takes both of them working anymore. It's not a choice if the wife works. Today, it's almost a necessity because of the economical turn that our nation is in and their state is in. But I'm thankful uh, that God is the greatest paymaster. I, I tell you what, uh, you may not make much on the job, but if you get in touch with the Lord, you'll be blessed beyond measure. You'll be paid more than you've ever been paid before in your life. But it'll take obedience and to uh, faith in the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ to where that you can have success. Uh, you can get by on what he's provided for you. I believe each and every one of us has what we, uh, God wants us to if we're truly seeking after the Lord. If I had a million dollars, it may hinder me from working uh, at doing things for the Lord. It might stop me from uh, depending upon him. I believe I've got exactly what God intended me to have uh, to where that it's not too much to where I can continue to serve him and it's not too little to where I would curse him and be damned and so that we can see and then emotional today that we see emotions run wild I've never heard so many people that are on medication because of depression, because of emotional problems. And don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. If you have that problem, you should seek medical advice. But I believe sometime along the way that you need to cry out for the mercies of God because he's still able to heal. He's still able to mend. He's still able to give you what is needed in your life to where you can function as a child of God. And so that we can see... Find shelter from your storm in Jesus Christ. If we took a survey today, that every one of us, no doubt, had something in our life that we're troubled by, something in our life that hinders us and, and we worry about. But I tell you what, you can find shelter in Jesus Christ. I tell you what, 
He's the greatest place that I've ever been is in his arms and in his hands. When he wraps his arms around me, I, oftentimes when we go to a funeral, we pray that God would just wrap his arms around that family that's grieving and touch them and comfort them and in a way that only he can do. And that's a time of grieving, but I believe he's willing to do that any time that we're in trouble, any time that we're having difficulties in life. He's always ready to wrap his arms around us and bring that comfort that only he can do. I can remember as a child, and my children were like that also. They loved their dad, but when they fell and bumped their knee, they headed for mom because that she could comfort them better than what dad could. But brother, I tell you what, there's no comfort that I like the church. Uh, this past week, we had a, a funeral. Uh, Sister Shirley's uh, a granddaughter died, and she uh, over and over, almost every sin, she said, I thank God for my church family because she found comfort there. She found the love that she was in need of. She found those people that were willing to sit and talk with her and take some time out of their life because we realized that she was grieving and because she was, I was and you was because we're one in the body of Christ. When one of us suffer, we all suffer because that we're a family. God loves each and every one of us, and he wants us to be knitted together in the Holy Spirit of God uh, to, uh, to where that we can stand up on that united front and confront the things of this world. He is like rivers of water in a dry place, speaks of refreshment and satisfaction. The world's unfailing a search for satisfaction. Today, that no matter what you get, I can remember, and I probably told you this before, that when I... I up here and got a decent job that I wanted a, a new car and when I went looking for it, it had to be the right color, it had to have the right engine it had to have the right transmission it had to have everything just the way that I wanted it. When that uh, new model came out, I thought boy I, that one looked better than mine because there's no satisfaction in the things that you own. There's no satisfaction because they grow old they grow uh, uh, to, they lose their uh, luster they lose their uh, uh, thing that we're looking for the most satisfaction and brother today that I, I'm thankful that I'm satisfied with what I got when I was a nine year old boy I've never wanted to add anything to it or take anything away because that which he placed in my heart was perfect I'm far from being perfect on this outward man but that which he sealed until the day of redemption is satisfied with the relationship that I have with Jesus Christ and so that we can see he speaks of uh, refreshments and satisfaction. The world's unfailing search for satisfaction. We can't find it anywhere that we go. Uh, and lasting satisfaction. Jesus offered living waters. If we look in the word of God in John, uh, the fourth chapter, talking to the woman at the well, he offered her living waters, uh, something that would not only just quench for the short period, but it was a life-staining uh, su substance that he was talking about, a, waters of living wa a water of living waters. And brother, it was sufficient. And brother, when she went away from that place, uh, she was a changed human being. She had came out that that morning because of her reputation and probably didn't want to talk to anyone. She probably didn't want to see anyone because she was afraid of that of her accusers that, would, that she met. But brother, when she tasted of the water of life, she went back in unashamed and said, come and see a man that told me all that I ever did. Come and see this man uh, that is out at the well because he spoke as no other man has spoken. The Pharisees was, uh, was uh, impressed because they said he spoke speaks with authority. They spoke on uh, uh, hearsay. They spoke on what they wanted rather than what God's word wanted. But she said, come and talk to the, to the man. And then in John uh, chapter 7, 34, his promise is the Holy Spirit. He says, it's expedient that I go away. And they couldn't understand that. Uh, they had left everything that they had. Uh, they had followed after this man that they thought was, going, was the Messiah. And they said, that, uh, 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 how can this be? Why is it so necessary for you to leave us? If you leave us, we don't know what we're going to do. Uh, but he said, it's expedient that I go away, uh, that the 
comforter would come because he was going to send back the Holy Spirit that he was limited while he was here in his walk of life. I told a body and he could only be at one place at one time but he was going to send back the Holy Spirit and brother he can dwell in the hearts of each and every one of us that have put our faith and trust in the Lord. Uh, he's able to uh, give us that which is needed. Uh, Jesus is a living water. He still offers living water over in Revelation. It's still being offered to die. And the uh, 21st chapter, I think it is, uh, of Revelation, it talks about come and drink freely. It's still being offered as, as long as he is still on the right hand of the Father. Brother, there's time for grace and there's time for mercy. But one of these days, he's going to step off from the right hand and he's going to come back. And brother, the time for mercy is ended and the time of judgment's going to begin. And so that we can see that He has given us. He's still offering it today. If you've never been saved by His grace and God is speaking to your heart this morning, you can have that opportunity. You can have that and go away rejoicing because your name's been written down in the Lamb's book of life. I would, sometimes I can remember when I, Brenda and I got our house paid for and we burnt that note and our names was on the title and we thought, hippie, uh, we finally got her paid for but praise be unto God I still have to maintain it I'm thankful that I'm going to a home that's been prepared by the hands of God that I'll never have to repair I'll never have to do anything to it it's exactly the way God wants it and I'll be satisfied with it when I get there he's still offering isn't that wonderful he is like a shadow of a great rock in a weary land speaks of rest Shade is something that we need, isn't it? I can remember when I was a kid growing up. Back then, when I was about eight, nine, ten years old, we still hold corn or chop corn. And I'd say, Dad, why don't we plant us a shade tree out here in the middle of it? It'd be a whole lot more comfortable to chop this corn in the shade than it would be in the sun. I didn't realize that it probably wouldn't grow in the shade. But a shade is something that we want and seek on a hot day, isn't it? I can remember before the time of air conditioning. Can anybody else remember before air conditioning? Yeah, we, had, we found the tree. We found some place to where that we could get in out of the sun because it was cooler there and it was so comfortable to get there and I stretch out in your lawn chair after you'd been out in the sun all day that you could maybe get a little breeze blowing. And, brother, it was the best thing that ever happened. Last night I told Brenda... I uh, she said, I'm hot. And I said, well, let's open up a window. She said, it might make me sick. And I'm thinking, yeah, that stuff that comes through the air conditioner is all right, but none of that fresh air stuff for her. But, you know, sometimes that fresh air is what we need, something that's refreshing, that's, that is blowing uh, from the throne of grace, uh, from the throne throne of God that brings encouragement and brings a re uh, 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 to where that we can rest and do have a moment. To where that we can see. And Jesus offers rest to all those that are weary. Matthew 8 and 28 and 38 talks about all you that are labor and heavy laden coming to me. And I'll give you rest. If you're looking for rest anyplace else, you might find it temporary. Uh, but it won't last very long. Uh, because there's only one place that you can truly find rest. And that is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, some are weary fighting the temptation. Uh, we get tired along the way. I'm thankful that I, I can lay down at night. And I, I can I'll lay down on the pillow and I can find some rest sometime. I'm tired of fighting the battles, but yet I've got a little place uh, that there's no other place like at my house. And that's uh, where I can find some comfort at. And I'm thankful that God provided it for me. And when I'm getting tired of fighting the temptations, I can come in uh, to the house of God. I can put everything else aside and just focus my heart and my mind upon the Lord. And I, I get a little rest from fighting the battles that we have to contend with every day. We're weary battling for poor health. Sometimes that we take health for granted. When I was 18 years old, I didn't think I'd ever have a pain and didn't ever think I'd ever I'd get tired. 
But as I progress, now then, my health plays a big part in my day each and every day because it's not in the best. And I get tired of fighting that. I tell Brenda, I'm so tired of hurting. I'm so tired of not being able to do what I want to. But as long as I've got breath on this side of eternity, I believe God's got something that I can do. My health may not be the best. and I may not be the strongest. And I may not be able to accomplish what I used to. But I believe as long as you're on this side of of glory there's something that you can do I used to serve I'd go see a little lady uh, she was up in her 90s and her health was real frail and I'd go on Saturday morning and I would visit her and, and she would just uh, I, uplift me because she'd tell me about how good God had been to her about some revivals that she had been in and when I'd get up to leave she'd say honey I don't know what the Lord's leaving me here for I'm ready to go anytime she called and I'd go out to the car and I'd just laugh and I'd say Lord I know why she's here if no other reason to give me encouragement and help me and strengthen me in my Christian walk of life because although that she was frail and although that her health was uh, uh, deteriorating, uh, she was talking about the one that had gave her hope of eternal life and she knew when this body was tired and laid down and died that she had a better one waiting for her on the other side. Finances today that we see, as I said, I've earlier mentioned, our kids, the finances that they have to face because of the economy around us. And I'm sure that they're tired. But if you want to really find true financial wealth, find it in Christ Jesus. I'm, I, when Brenda and I, I started tithing. I, it was at a period in our life that we probably had less money than we'd ever had. We'd bought a house and we'd bought a car and, and God convicted us to start tithing. And, and, and we came went home and we said, I don't see hardly how we can. And I said, Brenda said, we're going to try. We're going to do it best. And said, he's getting 10 right off the top. And uh, we begin to not have the financial woes. We begin to have more than we ever did. Not because that we were expecting it, because that we were giving it, because that God had convicted our hearts of it and we felt it was the right thing to do. If you tithe and it's not because that you're convicted of that, it won't do you much good. But if God's convicted you, you need to act upon that because God will bless every effort. I used to tell Brenda, I'm sure glad he only wants 10. He could, I, I want it 90 and left me the 10 and I'd have really been in bad shape but we can see financial woes some are weary of conflict family conflicts Today, the devil is trying to tear our homes apart. We see divorce on every hand. We see people that, uh, children being abused and neglected, uh, financial because of uh, family conflicts. What a sad state of affairs that to be. I'm thankful that he didn't give me enough sense, much sense, but I knew I wanted to raise my children, and I knew that I wanted to keep them and protect them the best that I could, uh, no matter what Brenda did. Oh, we love, we love those children and sacrificed everything that, and I don't regret it. Don't get me wrong, I'm not boasting. But I said, they didn't ask to come into this world. They didn't ask to be born. They were born because of mine and your actions. And that gives us the responsibility. And then when the grandkids come, oh my goodness. It had just begun. Oh. But I wouldn't have it any way, other way. Family conflicts, we have them from time to time. We have to endure them from time to time. But if you're in a family conflict, the only way that you can really, really find relief is in Christ Jesus. Every morning when we get up and Brenda's getting ready to work, she'd say, remember those little boys going to school today. And we remember them. God... We can't be with them, but you can. Yeah, we can't protect them. They're, they're up to the point that we can't keep them in, in the house anymore. But God, you're big enough. And I know that you want the very best for them. Two of them have made profession of faith in Christ. I've had the privilege of, by, of baptizing. That little one, he's a different breed, I'm telling you. But I believe one day God... Uh, I'll have the privilege of baptizing him. And if I don't, somebody else can. But the comfort, come to Jesus for, and to find a rest. 
Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. No matter what, I counsel. When I counsel married people, I said, your home will never be happy without Christ in it. If it's family conflict, it'll never go away until you get Jesus involved in it. And he's the answer. He's the answer to every problem that we have in this walk of life, if we only allow him to. Sometimes he don't give me the answer that I want. But see, I see life just day by day. He saw the whole movie, people. He knows how it ends. We know how it ends. And we that have been saved by his grace are winners. But if you really, truly want to find rest and peace, come to Jesus. As we look in Isaiah 40 and 31, I thank God for this verse as I read it. 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, and they shall mount up with eagles, wings of eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Isn't that a blessing? Everything might wear out, but you'll still be in tune with the Lord. He'll give you the strength for the hour and for the day. Jesus is all sufficient Savior. He's everything that we need. Jesus today. Trust him to save you today. Marty, if you come, song of invitation. He's willing to save you this morning. If you're here and lost, that you don't have a personal relationship with him, he desires that more than any. He said that none should perish, but all come to repentance. That's his heart's desire. He doesn't want anyone to go out of this world unprepared for an eternity with him. But see, no matter what I say and no matter what the Word of God says, you have to act upon that. Believing is not enough. You have to act upon it. The Bible says that Abraham, God believed Abraham and is imputed to him for righteousness. But he not only believed God, he acted upon it. <clears throat> Excuse me. He started packing up. He didn't know where he was going or how he was going to get there. But he believed God and he acted upon it. You can believe this morning, but until you act upon it, until you move upon it and you accept it, you'll never be saved. But this morning, if God is speaking to your heart, this is the day of opportunity. This is the day that you can go away rejoicing in the Lord. But it's your choice. In my own feeble way, I've done the best I know how to share the gospel with you. And I know that it's not anything. But the precious word is what's so important. Because he tells us when we read it, that it will not return into him void. It'll find a lodging place. It'll touch somebody's heart. And not only touch it, but change it. I had open heart, and I've got a scar from here to here because I had to go in there and repair it. But that nine-year-old boy, he done a magnificent operation, and there's not one scar there. He took out that old heart of stone and replaced it with a heart of flesh that he could touch and mold into what he wanted it to be. And I'm thankful. I'm thankful today that he did. As we stand and sing, Marty. My soul was disturbed with sorrow. Would you give me a thought or a friend with you?
Amen. Amen. We thank you for your time and your attention and your prayers this morning. I pray that you're exactly where God would have you to be. Regardless of whether you're saved, it's where that you can find your place in serving the Lord. And if you're not saved, that something has been said or done that would cause you to realize the condition that your life is in before it's too late. Before you go out of this world unprepared to meet God. But again, we appreciate you. We love you. Remember services tonight, choir practice, Tom, at 5. So remember that. You're at liberty to go.